In this video, we are going to look at some basics of a little thing called a diode. And um, the most common one, we all know, it's an LED. The L, the E, and the D stands for light emitting diode. So the LEDs that you see, which are all over the place nowadays, um, are types of diodes. And a typical diode symbol looks like this. If you saw it on a schematic, it's this is the wire part. This is the line up and down and the triangle. That's the diode. And the line up and down is always the negative side, as I put up here. And the triangle part is always the positive side. So when you're putting into a circuit, you know, which is positive and which is negative. And light emitting diodes add to the standard symbol here two arrows. When diodes are used, they're typically used, other than LEDs, to force current going in one direction. And so here's our standard symbol again. And the current is forced the direction of the triangle here. So it looks like an arrow and you just follow that and that's the direction the current would go through the diode. If you try to go the opposite direction, this line is represents like a wall, you can't do it. So diodes force current one direction without allowing it to go back the other way. And you may ask why that's ever needed and it comes in handy when you have things like motors running and when you stop the power to a motor, it will continue to spin and a motor that continues to spin becomes a generator. And as it winds down, it'll start to generate electricity and it will push that electricity back this way. But if you put a diode there, it can't. It'll stop right at that line there. This 0 0.7 volts represents about the average amount of voltage that's lost when you go through a diode. So it'll put the force the electricity in one direction. But when it does that, you lose a little bit of your voltage. There are two other diodes that are uh, used often. One is called a Zener diode and that's got a typical diode symbol with a line on either end one going up away from the triangle one coming back towards it and these are helpful when you're trying to set a specific voltage so say you have eight volts and you want five volts well they make a zener diode that's five volts so you hook your eight volts up and you're but you're forcing the electricity the wrong way here that's what makes these zener diodes unique so you're kind of forcing it this way but it blocks three of the eight volts and allows only five volts to get through. So these are really nice if you have too much voltage and you're trying to drop the voltage to a certain amount. And the second one is the Shockey diode. And this is a typical symbol, triangle, but off of the line you have not just a line, but you have like a hook on either side. So when you see that hook, that means a Shockey diode was used. And this is what we're gonna focus on today. Shockey diodes, they have a low forward voltage drop. So instead of 0.7 volts, it's usually like 0.3 volts or so. So when you use it in the forward manner here, is which is what you'd use it for. Only the zeners are used typically in reverse. But the forward voltage here would be about 0.3 volts drop. They're fast switching, which means they can go from blocking voltage backwards to allowing voltage forwards. In a lot of diodes, the switching is slow because it takes a while for the electrons to get all situated again in the diode so that it can block it going the other way. Shockey diodes are fast. You can have forward voltage go through them, and then when backwards voltage comes, it stops it quickly, and you can go back and forth very easily. They have a low voltage turn on, which basically means you can use them in low voltage situations. And the other thing about Shockey diodes is that they work well with high frequencies, and those are typically in the megahertz and gigahertz frequencies that I'm talking about. And lastly, Shockey diodes are used for something that's a pretty unique little device, and that's one of the things really the primary thing that I want to focus on, and it's called a lectenna, like an antenna, you know, on your TV set or whatever. It's a lectenna, L-E-C-T-E-N-N-A. And we're going to go over now to, uh, to our special guest to talk about what is a lectenna. Before I do that, I want to say that specifically the shock key diode we're using is one that's labeled a 1SS86. It's made by Hitachi. It's a 1SS86 Hello, my name is Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball, and I'm here to explain a couple things to you. So sit tight. We're we'll talking about a antenna right here, right there. Stands for something. Light emitting diode rectifying antenna. Don't say that. That's just too long to say antenna. I guess antenna is so special. It doesn't need any external power supply, you know, like, like a battery. So it works really well, though, with high frequencies. Well, I think he was talking about that over there. And those frequencies are Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, microwaves. So you can take a lectenna 
And if you're real good about it, you can find out if your microwave is leaking. That would be good to know. You got some frequencies. Probably can't see them. We're going to focus on the 2.4 gigahertz because that's the frequency that the, uh, let's see, the Wi-Fi is working at. We're using that one SS86 dial. One SS, I have a mommy Gilligan Island right there, that SS. One SS86 dial, and there it is. Probably can't see it, but it's there. We need to make this whole thing work by testing the LED to the one SS86 dial. In this manner right here, and this is kind of complicated looking, basically you want the positive of the LED hooked to the negative of the diode, and you want the negative of the LED hooked to the positive of the diode. So it looks like they're going in circles or something over there. Now diode always has a line on it, and that line is the negative side of the diode. And so you hook up the LED, so you got your negative short lead on the LED, hooked up to the positive side of the diode that does not have the line on it and then you take the other side and you hook it up there and you twist them around real tight that's important tight make them tight and you get something that kind of looks like this right down here we'll look at one closer in a minute you can't touch this when you're using it because you got so much power in your hands and it kind of messes up so you got to isolate it now put it here in a test tube or you're going to make a little piece of wire wrap it around that led See how that's coming down on that like that? Right there? That worked too. Um, I think that's what I do right there. But this will work too. Put it in the test tube. Yeah. Okay. I think we covered everything. We all can touch this. This is the Shockey diode you're looking for. It has the letter H imprinted on it in white there. You can see it. It's made by Hitachi and it's got the designation of a 1SS86. Here's a standard LED and pull this closer here. You can see on the LED it clearly has one lead that's longer than the other and that's the positive side and if you want to get real fancy and you happen to be working with an LED that's been snipped or cut or whatever you can look on the inside here and you'll see that there's a larger triangular piece here and a smaller triangular piece on the right here. Okay, The smaller one's always the positive. Some LEDs you can't see through because they're opaque, but if nothing else, you at least have that as a backup. Here's your diode, and uh, it's got the two lines right there, so we know that's the negative side, and we know this is the positive side. So we're going to line these up so that the positive goes to the negative, and the negative goes to the positive. So we're going to take the LED right here. Uh, the leads are separated. It's not so easy to tell, but this is the positive side. We also know that because I just mentioned it. The smaller of the two triangles in here is on the right. That's the positive. We want that with the negative of the uh, diode. So we're going to flip this thing around right here. And you want to line those up like that. And then you want to twist these wires around as tightly as you can right here. So I'm going to do that. And uh, let's see. So you get the idea here. I'm going to go off camera here and finish it. But that's the idea. I've got one side started. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I finished wrapping both sides here. You want to wrap these as tight as possible. You want as much electrical conductivity between the leads of both the diode and the LED as you can. Um, and it should look something like this. This diode does not have to be exactly in the center, but try as close as you can. And uh, if you're one who solders, soldering these will even add to the, uh, the conductivity between the two there. So there you have it. We've made our lectenna. Finally, I went ahead and soldered the wires together. It just helps with the conductivity. It's not necessary. Honestly, I've never tested without it, so it probably would work just as well. But I guess I'm doing a demonstration here, and I wanted this to work as good as possible. Closer look at these frequencies, you can see how long the length would have to be from the center of the LED out to just one side to pick up that frequency. So the 2.4 gigahertz, which is what we're going to look at because it's the easiest to do just to demonstrate what a lectenna is, we need a 29.7 millimeter lead on each side from the center of the LED. Well, it turns out that at least the diodes that I obtained, the lead is 30 millimeters on one side. So it already is set. I'm not going to cut anything. If we want to test 5.3 gigahertz, which is what 5G was early on, um, we'd have to cut it down to 13.4 millimeters, but we're not going to do that. And you can see these other frequencies, you have to add a lot. 
like ham radio, you want to pick up that frequency, you're adding 19 inches, 482.6 millimeters on one side of your little device. So both sides, that's 38 inches. So, and you can't touch it. So those wires would have to be supported some way other than holding them. Yeah. So, okay. Just wanted to show you what this was all about. You can see with just one lead here uh, from the center of the LED, which is also the center of the diode, that we almost reached the 29.7. I thought it was 30 millimeters, but it's close enough to pick it up because I've tried it. But you want to be in that range of 30 millimeters on one side and the other side. Don't forget this is an antenna we're building, and the length of the antenna does affect what we're picking up as far as frequencies go. I'm here at my microwave. It's sticking down. There's nothing in there. But uh, we're going to take our little lectenna here, and you can already see it blinking. Look at that. Now, this is not powered by batteries. It's picking up the microwaves, and so I do have microwave leakage. Look at this. Whoa. Look at that. Huh. Well, it's an older microwave. Maybe that's why, but it sure is uh, actually amazing and a little bit disturbing. Look at that. Not from the center, but just from the edges. You can see that clearly here. But it did light up like uh, earlier, about two to three inches out, somewhere in there. Also, I'm noticing that if you put it at an angle to what it is that you're looking at, it seems to work better than if you just straight look at that. Yeah, I am five or six inches away now. Okay, well, my microwave leaks. Probably not a good thing. I'm back here with my router. One of the things we should be able to pick up with our lectenna. Yep, there we go. Not as bright with the, as with the microwaves, but you wouldn't expect it to be. The signal's not nearly as potent. Okay. So using the lectenna, I found out where the antenna is, the Wi-Fi, where it's going in and out of my phone. It's the upper left-hand corner there. And... Um, yeah, that's pretty pretty sensitive. I'm actually really surprised. But uh, one last thing about these. Apparently, if you connect a um, milliamp detector uh, with uh, one wire attached to one side and the other to the other side, which could be either analog or digital, uh, the needle, which is going to be moving sensitively more than the LED because it takes less power to move the needle on a milliamp detector, uh, you can test for EMF fields, electromagnetic fields in your house. So that's kind of a slick secondary use of this. Uh, butane, Mr. Dr. Burke.